Doug and Aaron Mona Scott, and coming up next, Miami officials are happy now with Miami Vice, but not the city's new ranking. The new non-alcoholic bar at OSU, the Watterson to sales game, and all the rest of the high school football scores. Good Mona, Jimmy and Jim are on WCMH Television, Columbus, Ohio. Newswatch for Columbus is next. Good evening, everyone. Columbus has made the list of stressful cities to live in, but we are not one of the 13 red zone cities headed by Miami, Florida. It also includes Cleveland. They had the worst scores of 184 cities examined for population-linked pressures, which threatened their social, economic, and environmental well-being. A study conducted by the group Zero Population Growth. Fargo, North Dakota, was best in the urban stress test. And using a 1 to 5 rating system, Columbus came out better than any big Ohio city other than Akron. We were not in any of the red zones. Columbus was best in hazardous waste, and our crowding was considered good. There were warning signs in terms of violent crime, population change, births, and air quality and economics. And it's economics that's keeping Columbus off the list of the best places to start a business. John Naisbitt, the author of Megatrends, looked at business spirit, government attitude, and tax incentives to come up with the 10 best places to be an entrepreneur. Ann Arbor, Michigan made the list, and so did Indianapolis. One of the keys to Indianapolis is a tremendous public-private cooperation and public-private ventures. And part of their strategy, a very important part of their strategy, is to build Indianapolis as the great sports center as an economic strategy. And that's, that's working. That's part of it. But it's very diversified. HUD officials came here this week, and they apparently didn't like what they saw because Senators John Glenn and Howard Metzenbaum are asking for a federal investigation of our public housing projects. Want to know why the cost of renovating CMHA is so expensive, why so many of the units have no one living in them, and why so many rents have gone unpaid, and the lack of security and unsanitary conditions. Homicide detectives here in Columbus are investigating the shooting death of a 12-year-old girl tonight on the north side on Cleveland Avenue. By Mancha Taylor, it appears to have been an accidental shooting with a shotgun, but police are not sure just how it happened because they had to climb up on the roof of the apartment building where someone had apparently tried to hide evidence that was related to the shooting. A grandfather got away from a burning home today, jumping from a porch roof on East 17th after handing his grandchildren to a passerby. But Robert Langford wound up with a broken arm. Me and the baby was upstairs, and we got out the back bedroom window. And that's as far as I know, because we couldn't get downstairs, so we had to go out the window. Uh, how are you feeling? I decided my sore arm and sore hip. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. We're feeling good on the OSU campus tonight. It's a football weekend, and midterm exams ended today. And there is flowing on High Street tonight, but our Colleen Marshall says that there is another kind of drinking that is underway right now at the Student Union. Well, Doug, you know, this may look like a pina colada, but I assure you I am not getting drunk on the job. This is a non-alcoholic drink, and this is a non-alcoholic bar. It opened tonight at the Student Union, but it's got some pretty stiff competition. Drinking and cruising the High Street bars is almost a part of the curriculum at OSU. OSU. And even though a new study says alcohol consumption is down on college campuses and the drinking age is expected to go up to 21, no one really expects booze to lose its appeal. I had a rough week and I'm ready. I'm just out with my friends having a good time. Midterms. Yeah. A person has to get out and relax and just take it easy and this is just one way to do it. Organizers of the non-alcohol cafe say they want to provide an alternative, not a substitute for alcohol. That's probably been around as long as colleges have, so I, that's not realistic to think that will ever happen. And that's not what we're trying to do is, you know, to say that that's a negative aspect on cam of campus life. We're just saying this is another option for students on campus. The sparkling non-alcohol wines and fizzy daiquiris look like the real thing. The pastries and the munchie trays are the real thing. But can fancy foods and fun drinks compete with beer blasts and campus carousing? We're really putting an effort into it, and I'm real impressed with the effort the union's putting into it, but I don't know how feedback's going to be. And you wouldn't be here on a Friday night if you didn't have to work? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be here. Now, the gig band is playing in the background. They've been here all night, too. And believe it or not, although these tables are empty now, the waitresses tell me between 8 and 10, they were fairly busy. At one point, all of the tables were filled. They figure it's uh, the busiest peak hour. They had about 60 people in here, and they're hoping that they'll get that many people.
people in here tomorrow night and next weekend as well. Sure, Tony. What can you expect on the first night, huh? It's, it's got to be a little rough getting started in anything. Well, they don't have a lot of uh, publicity yet either, and they're hoping word of mouth, and hopefully this good music and the good food will bring students in here and not drinking. Maybe we've helped a little bit tonight. After Ohio State gets by Minnesota tomorrow, it is Iowa the uh, following Saturday, and 1,000 field seats are going up for sale. At St. John Arena on Monday. We'll see who's number one. Yes, after next week. Stay with us. A young woman from Upper Arlington is ambassador of Disney World. A mistake at a Houston TV station is most embarrassing for a local politician. This is Newswatch for Columbus. Doug Adair and Mona Scott have today's news for you. The sports is reported by the Dean of Central Ohio Sportscasters, Jimmy Crum. And your exclusive weather forecast is prepared by meteorologist Jim Goodall. Newswatch for Columbus will continue after these messages. We hope so. We hope so. We hope so. <laughs> you ever hear of Jose Biro? No. 86 years old, died today in Argentina, and he invented the ballpoint pen. Is Back there, around 1942-43. I thought he provided our slide for tonight, since you no, usually know those no, people. No, no, who is it? Coming by surprise. Well, this is your friend, Rick Thorne. Oh. This is Doug's pal from Columbus, and this is a slide of the mountains in Colorado. And he's offered to come down and sit next to you some night to the news. Okay, you, Doug, well, since you uh, use the help, struck Rick. up this friendship yesterday on this newscast. So we're going to show more of Rick's uh, photography since he is very, very good. We have a lot of good ones. The temperature is dropping by the hour. When we put in these figures, it was 49. Wait till you see what it is now. There is virtually no wind. And when you have dry air and it's calm, too, the temperatures really can fall off. But before we talk about Ohio's weather, let's show you what's going on nationally. This has become a tropical depression. Air Force reconnaissance will get there in the morning to see if it will strengthen further. That's next week. Yeah, she had a 51 once for a nine hole, so 66 for but nine. But that was putt-putt. Oh, Exceptional. Man. She's a very good golfer. Jimmy flew with the Buckeyes to Minnesota tonight. Douglas Sells has the high school scores and highlights of Watterson Disables. Jimmy's in Minneapolis tonight with the Buckeyes, as we said, but he joins us in wishing Paul Henderson a happy birthday. And, Doug, I know you have Watterson to sales, but I want to put in a word for a terrific halftime performance tonight, Worthington, Gahanna. The bands combined and performed in one of the greatest programs I've ever seen high schools do. Not too shabby. And tough loss for Worthington today in field hockey, by the way. They lost yeah. to Hartley. Hartley goes to the state championships. Well, good for Hartley, though. But let's take a look at uh, a couple of big conference games tonight in high school football. First of all, DeSales ranked 10th in the state in Doug and Mona. Buffalo over Vancouver 5-4. to four. The Rangers beat Los Angeles 5 to nothing. And Jimmy thinks that Ohio State will win by a couple of touchdowns tomorrow. I think so, too. Boy, but it, Minnesota is tough. Oh, they're very Minnesota's tough. 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 And next week, if we do win tomorrow, it could almost be for the national championship. Against Jim Ganahl's Iowa Hawkeyes. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yep. Still to come, the sweet smell of excess. Three billion dollars is nothing to sniff at. And that's how much Americans spend each year on perfume, cologne, and other fancy fragrances. Yeah, and what does all of that money pay for? Doug likes his story. He has an excuse now for never paying more than a dollar ninety-eight for cologne. For perfume <laughs> costing $130 an ounce, 50 goes to the store that sells it. $20 covers advertising, another 20 for the bottle, and $10 each for the designer's uh, box and shipping. Yes, and what about the ingredients? Just $10, $10 of that $130 cost. Maybe you could write off the other $120 as a charitable deduction. Oh. Yeah, yeah sure. Cute. If you're Miami Vice fans, you might want to know that John... Uh, or or Don Phillip Johnson or and Philip Michael Thomas are on tonight uh, on location. Yeah, it's been a long night. Go Bucks, and Friday we'll go videos. back to that hayride. Uh, that, Mansfield. Yeah, <laughs> south of Mansfield. Wanted hayride. Have a good week. Doug and I'll finish uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad it's the weekend. <laughs> The Associated Press has recognized Newswatch 4 as the best regularly scheduled newscast in Ohio.